Today, ladies and gentlemen, I have something that I want to discuss that is quite interesting and revealing. It is a concerning issue that needs to be addressed, especially at a time where people are focusing more and more on this virus, which I will be presenting an updated video on very shortly. So as important as this issue of the coronavirus is, I feel we still need to take a moment and turn our attention to something that has recently made headlines. But I feel many people have brushed it to the side without realizing its significance. And that is the big explosion in space that was just detected. The biggest anyone has ever seen, they say. Now I've talked about this kind of thing before. And I have tried to emphasize the importance of staying aware of what they are putting out there in the form of discoveries in space. You have to admit, they keep telling us about these explosions, these supernovas, these magnetars, an increase in space debris, meteors. On many occasions in just the past few years, which should tell you all something very important. So let's get into this because I know you are all wondering what it is that we need to know about this bad boy, the big one. Okay, for those of you who have not looked into this story, let me fill you in on what has happened. So this is the Ophiuchus constellation, or galaxy cluster. It lies between Aquila, Serpens, Sagittarius, and Hercules. The constellation is opposite the Orion constellation and is mostly visible in the summer months. In the night sky, at certain latitudes. The name of Fuchsius is originally Greek, and get this, it means serpent bearer, a man grabbing hold of a snake, who, to the ancient Greeks, represented the god Apollo. There is that name again. Now, the Ophiuchus galaxy cluster is about 390 million light years away from Earth. One light year, as you may very well know, is about 5.8 trillion miles or nine and a half trillion kilometers so it's pretty far astronomers have been keeping an eye on this cluster for quite some time at the center of this galaxy cluster is a massive black hole surrounding this black hole is a cavity in the cluster's plasma that was carved by this super explosion which some attribute to energy being released by the black hole. The previous record holder for the largest explosion was MC073574. This Ophiuchus explosion was about five times that. And I say was because this explosion happened a very, very long time ago. Now at first, this thing was picked up by X-ray telescopes. But the studying astronomers didn't think this was an explosion due to its massive size that cannot be explained. So what they did was they took X-ray data from NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and the ESA's XMM Newton. And then they took radio data from the Murchison Wide Field Array in Australia and India's giant meter wave radio telescope. The Chandra Observatory writes, in the center of the Ophiuchus cluster is a large galaxy containing a supermassive black hole. Researchers have traced the source of this gigantic eruption to jets that blasted away from the black hole and carved out a large cavity in the hot gas. 
A labeled version includes a dashed line showing the edge of the cavity in the hot gas seen in x-rays from both Chandra and XMM Newton. Radio emission from electrons accelerated to almost the speed of light fills this cavity, providing evidence that an eruption of unprecedented size took place. It was the radio data fitted with the X-ray data that would confirm that this was an actual explosion, the largest explosion in the universe that we have detected so far. Now this explosion occurred long before we were ever here and the energy coming from this explosion emitted has already reached many, many other celestial bodies, which means that this explosion would have caused other explosions after it, which means that they will soon probably detect other explosions surrounding this cluster, some further away from us and some closer to us. The issue with this is, see, understand that where we are in the universe and where this thing is, we are in a different part of space-time. So the different frequencies of energy that was released by this cluster would reach us at different times. Some that already hit us and some that may still be on the way, along with the energy of whatever other explosions that this thing has caused that have not yet been detected. The main issue here is cosmic radiation. You have primary cosmic rays that come in and hit the Earth's atmosphere. They collide with atomic matter in the atmosphere and become secondary cosmic rays. All this cosmic radiation that is coming from these black holes and supernova, magnetars, there are quite a few. That radiation becomes a part of the background ionizing radiation that contributes to human radiation exposure. And this type of radiation has increased and it does affect our sun. As this radiation from the cosmos and the sun continue to pour in, the ground level radiation goes up and also the high altitude radiation also goes up at around 20 to 70% higher than ground level radiation. So in other words, the higher up in the sky you go, the more cosmic radiation you are exposed to. It can be a problem for us here on the ground, especially if you are in an area where there is a pocket or hole in the atmosphere where the radiation can get to you. A big problem for aircraft, pilots, and passengers, and an even bigger problem for astronauts. When it comes to biological life on this planet, this bombardment of radiation affects cancer and mutation rates. It affects and destroys certain marine vegetation that certain life forms such as fish are dependent on. That along with volcanism and temperature changes in bodies of water, the food chain is disrupted and you end up with marine life die-offs. This radiation also does affect the climate and not in a good way. Now here is something that a lot of people miss or are unaware of. This type of radiation does affect electronics. The radiation can affect electric circuit components that cause what's called soft errors, which affect the CPU performance and data in the memory of those computers, which are onboard commercial aircraft, by the way. Satellites are the first to be affected by these rays, then aircraft. In fact, in 2008, this type of radiation may have caused an airliner to plunge hundreds of feet in elevation, causing injuries to passengers and crew. Some suggest that this radiation has affected the function of certain vehicles. And then ground level electronics are personal computers as well. According to IBM, Computers experience about one cosmic ray induced error per 256 megabytes of RAM per month. Sometimes it causes major malfunctions and computer crashes, not to mention its effects on mobile phones, okay? Let me just go over what IBM research has shown on this. 
Alpha particles emitted from radioactive impurities in silicone and package an alpha particle is equivalent to a helium nucleus fly through silicone, affecting nearby devices. A few parts per billion are enough to cause problems. Hit rate depends on the purity of materials used in the production process. The duration of a strike is about 100 picoseconds. Cosmic rays, mainly neutrons, hit silicone and cause emissions of alpha and other particles. Only neutrons with enough energy penetrate the atmosphere and reach Earth. 15 particles per centimeter squared per hour at sea level. Higher flux in the higher elevations, 300 times more at 10 kilometers. A strike by a charged particle can change the logic value of a device. Not every strike flips the value. Stored charge depends on transistor capacity and operation voltage. Both are reduced as technology progresses. The fault rates of specific device types are calculated using models based on empirical results. Although the particle is positively charged, it can change a logic value to either one or zero. So they have not told us much more about this massive cosmic boom. And I feel we will need to keep our eyes open and be ready and expect for more of these explosions to be revealed. This is a very brief presentation as I just wanted to give information and spread awareness of what is going on. I would also like to hear what you all think about this latest discovery. I will be presenting an updated video on the coronavirus very soon. So stay tuned in for that. So until next time, folks, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.